Hello, I'm Bob Kelly, Senior Product Manager at CASE, and today I'll be doing a feature walkthrough of CASE Virtual Containers. In this session, we'll cover container package creation, both from the KBox and from a client-side utility. We'll cover container deployment and container management. There are a few ways you can go about creating a container package. One is via the KBox, where you can provide a silent command line and have the whole process automated from this web-based console. We also have a container creator utility, which is a simple Windows client-side utility that you can run to capture an interactive installation. You just run through the setup and it creates the container for package from there. When you create a container package using the container creator utility, you also generate a shareable recipe file format, and we support the creation of container packages using this recipe file format. And finally, we offer a command line interface so that if you have a scripted process, you can automate the creation of container packages using these tools. Here we'll focus on creation via the KBox and using the container creator utility. From the web-based admin console, you can easily automate the remote creation of container packages. If an installation is already defined elsewhere in the KBox, a choice of any command lines you've specified for each is presented as an option. If you already have an automated command line that meets your needs, or if you've repackaged an installation as an MSI setup, this creation option allows you to leverage such assets so you need not abandon work you've already done to deploy applications in the past. There are some options that may be set here as well. For example, you can require that there be a network connection to the KBox in order for the container to run. This isn't a technical limitation as the KBox is not used in the execution of container deployments. However, due to the portable nature of containers, this can help ensure that no one takes the container and tries to run it outside of your managed environment. Finally, we choose a target machine on which to generate the container and the rest is automated. Using the Container Creator Utility, you can very easily create container packages interactively. This method is good for those cases where you don't have a silent installation that meets your needs or if you wish to inject customizations that would otherwise be difficult to automate. Simply so choose a setup and where you want the package to be saved. Note there's also an option here to install into an existing package which is helpful for upgrades or updates you wish to make to existing packages. As when creating a container package from the KBox, we have package creation options here that you can specify for this particular package. There's also an option to generate a shareable recipe file that can be used with the AppDeploy Repackager or shared with other people and leveraged using the Container Creator Utility. Now we're just going to run through the standard installation for WinZip as an example. It's no different than installing an application on your computer at home. Just run through the installation wizard provided by the setup making installation configuration choices along the way. In this case, you see we're capturing a Windows installer setup, but there are no limitations as to what kind of setup you wish to capture. This is a big time saver when you consider that you don't need to investigate and test command line options or learn expensive repackaging software in order to realize a simple, customized application deployment. With the installation complete, we can simply launch the application from within the container creator utility, make any customization options we wish to make, and then complete the process, thereby capturing any changes we wish to have deployed along with this application. I'd like to point out here that the application is in fact running, though it isn't really installed been installed into the virtual container, and once we complete the process, I'll show you that the application is not present on the system. With the creation process complete, the container will automatically be uploaded to the KBox for deployment. And as I said, here you can see down in the corner, the application isn't actually installed on the system. So to create further packages, you don't need to worry about resetting the machine or uninstalling the application. Next, I'd like to talk quickly about the deployment of virtual containers. First, we have deployment configuration options. 
there are deployment decisions that may be made which are normally more restrictive in that they must be made at the time a package is created. Not so with virtual containers. By making more decisions at the time of deployment rather than at the time of package creation, such decisions for any or all future deployments can be changed very easily. Then we have dynamic targeting. Naturally, you can target systems on a wide range of criteria such as inventory data, active directory groups, and so forth. This leverages the same feature of labels, which is used for logically grouping and targeting systems throughout the K-Box. And finally, it's important to realize that deployment is not installation. It's largely a copy operation. There's no installation taking place, and therefore no installation process that might fail. Containers allow you to run applications without the need to install them. Switching over to the Deployment tab, I'll choose to deploy to a single machine, just to show you the options. You can choose from our existing containers that have been created and are available up on the K-Box. And when we choose an inventory item like this to deploy, you'll see we have additional options appear for Start Menu shortcuts, so you can choose which you'd like to include, and also file type associations. So you can include or exclude any file type associations that were captured during the setup process. There's also a number of metering and licensing restrictions that we can enforce. I talked earlier about requiring a connection to the K-Box, but we can also enforce a license count for active metering, restrict by day of week, by time of day, and even limit the number of times an application can be launched. Finally, we choose which system it is we want to deploy to and press Deploy Now to initiate the deployment. Finally, I'd like to quickly show a little about container management. Once a container is deployed, you have some great insight into the container and its activity, its current state, how many times it's been run, how long it's been run. There's also the ability to modify any of the deployment parameters, so you can change any execution restrictions after the deployment's taken place. Also worth mentioning is the ability to remotely manage these applications. So from the web-based admin console, you can remotely terminate or execute applications in a help desk capacity. Let's have a look. When selecting a container from those deployed, we see at the top left some general details about the container and some buttons to remove the container from the computer and even to reset it back to its known good state. If you think about the time you'd spend troubleshooting applications by reinstallation and profile deletion, the single button gets you there in just a couple of seconds. Below that, we can see what applications are installed as part of the container, and we can modify its configuration settings. Additionally, we can edit its execution restrictions, either for this individual instance of the container, or if we wish, we can easily apply such changes to the entire distribution set. On the lower right, we have options to remotely launch and terminate applications within the container, and above this on the right, we have execution information about the container, including its current status, number of times it's been run, when it was run, and total execution time. With virtual containers, you get automated or simple package creation, robust deployment options, powerful execution controls like the enforcement of concurrent licensing restrictions, and once deployed, you get better insight and control of that deployment than would otherwise be possible. This has been a quick walkthrough, but please visit case.com and download a trial to see it in action firsthand. Thank you.